Hi there, Kurt from The Cool Odyssey. Uh, one of the things we get asked about all the time on the road is about solar power and what we do for solar power. And one thing is for sure about solar power, every person you talk to is going to have a different opinion on what's the right way to do it, what's the wrong way to do it, how much do you need, and I believe it's a very individualized type of a situation. So you really need to evaluate what your power usage is to determine how much solar you need, how much battery power you need. So there's lots of videos that go into that. I'm not gonna talk about that today. What I'm gonna talk about is just what we have for our setup um, in our 2013 Seneca. Uh, we prefer to boondock. That's our preferred method of camping, which is what we're doing right now. We're out here um, at the Trona Pinnacles in California, which is a perfect opportunity to talk about the solar system and what we've done with our coach. Um, I would consider us to be relatively light users of power. We charge our laptops. We may watch a movie at night, um, may watch some sports on the outside TV. Uh, so, you know, we may run the TV for two or three hours, four hours on a given day, but then we may go days without turning on the TV. All of our other appliances um, that we use are relatively short duration. So we do use a toaster, we use a panini press, um, we use our vacuum, I use tools, I charge my cordless drills, whatever I happen to need, all off of our inverter. And uh, typically, we have no problem with the setup that we have. Um, in a typical day, we may run our batteries down to perhaps 80% is about as low as we usually see it in a morning when we wake up after a normal day. And with our system, we're normally charged back up by 11 o'clock in the morning, maybe 12 at the latest, if we had a pretty heavy usage day. So um, our system's probably overkill for what we do, but it makes it uh, relatively easy for us to boondock. We can stay as long as we like. We've uh, been in this area for a few days already, and. You know, we don't even think about running the generator, so we're just fine on the solar. So what I'll do is I'll kind of walk you through our system, the components and pieces. Um, I'll put some links down in the bottom to the actual parts that we have, but I'll give you a walkthrough of what we have uh, on our system. Okay, so to begin with, I'll talk about what we have for batteries. Batteries are what we use to store our energy uh, for usage throughout the day. And this is our battery compartment here. Um, and as you'll see, we actually have four batteries. We have four Lifeline AGM batteries. Um, something we did a little differently than a lot of other people do, these batteries are actually 12 volt batteries. Um, I'll put the model number and everything in the description, but each of these 12 volt AGM batteries has 150 amp hours of power. So for these four batteries, we're looking at a 600 amp hour battery pack uh, which with AGM, same as wet cell, any other type of standard battery, you never want to go down below a 50% charge. So that basically gives us 300 amp hours of power uh, that we can use without any recharging. So that is the size of our battery bank. Um, this is our shunt, which is what allows our trimetric meter inside to keep track of the usage of power, just think of it as like a fuel gauge, so it keeps track of all the energy in, all the energy out. So it all runs through this uh, shunt here. And then these are just various solenoids for the charging system. So that's the batteries. Okay, so here we are up on the roof. <clears throat> as you can see, we're here at the Trona Pinnacles. Boondocking out here in BLM land. And this is the setup we have for our solar panels on the roof. As you can see, we have four 160 watt panels, uh, very dirty, we'll deal with those. And since we're still in the winter time, the sun does not quite get straight above us. So we actually have bars that we can tilt the panels up. So I'm gonna go ahead and show how we tilt those because we're gonna be camping here for the next four or five days. So we're gonna go ahead and put up our panels and get as much solar as we can. <music> Okay, so that about does it for the tilting. So actual time, that probably took about five, seven minutes. And one thing that I will mention is this is not the optimal setup for us. As you can see, the panels actually get some shade 
from the air conditioner right there, which definitely affects your output. Uh, we originally set this up to have our RV facing to the west, which means the panels would actually be tilted up the other direction and they would have no obstructions, no shading from anything. Uh, but where we're parked at today, this would be our view if we were facing west. There's a road, probably some traffic, things like that. And this is our view this direction. So we decided we wanted to optimize the view and we can put up with a little less solar. Uh, as I mentioned previously in the video, we're not huge users of power anyway, so we usually are back up to 100% very early in the afternoon, so we're not really worried about it, but the panels are extremely dirty, so I am going to go ahead and wash those today. Okay, something else I'd like to point out up here on the roof. Um, as I had shown before, here's our solar panels. They've Tony cleaned them all up, so they're all nice and clean. Uh, and the wiring that we used on the roof. So all the wiring to the panels is 10 gauge and this is special wire that is produced by AM Solar so that it remains round which is good for sealing at your combiner box which the combiner box we chose to use is this unit down here that attaches to the side of our refrigerator vent and these connectors keep the connections waterproof and from these number 10 wires, they connect in the combiner box to the number six wire. And so we're fortunate that our battery bank is directly below us here. In our combiner box, basically the number six wires run directly down behind the refrigerator to our solar charge controller. And the run is, you know, less than 10 feet for sure. So it keeps the voltage drop to a minimum and keeps it very efficient and kept everything clean as far as routing the wires. So. Again, this is how our panels look in the tilted position. All right, so the next critical piece in the solar system is the solar charge controller. And we have four 160 watt panels up on the roof. Uh, so we went with a 50 amp charge controller, which is really more than we need, but we figured better safe than sorry. Um, and I located our charge controller in this bin. So this is where our batteries are located. And then this is where my charge controller is. So short runs are important to maximize voltage drop. So as you can see, coming into this bin, this is where I've installed our solar charge controller. And we're using a Victron unit, an MPPT unit, which basically this type of a charger allows higher voltages to come in from the panels. And it uses that extra voltage to increase the amperage of charge. Uh, so we have a battery disconnect switch on each side of the controller, one coming from the solar panels from above, and then this one going out to the batteries. And then I've also installed a 60 amp circuit breaker here on the system as well. So if there ever was to be an overload or anything, it would trip this. Um, as you can see at this point, we're in the absorption phase of charging and it's uh, about 10 15 in the morning so we're basically already charged up most of the way the rest of the day will just be kind of trickle charging in the rest to top it off and the run to the battery from the charge controller is you know less than three or four feet from here which is good so i've actually used number six conductors uh, going up to the roof as well as to the charge controller and from the charge controller to the battery is all number six. And the runs are relatively short. The run to my combiner box on the roof is less than eight feet. And then the run to the batteries is only about three feet. So that is the charge controller. Okay, so now I'm over on the driver's side of the coach. Um, and another critical piece of our solar system is the inverter, because what we like to do is to be able to run 120 volt appliances off of our 12 volt batteries and that requires an inverter. So in this compartment here is where I have installed our Xantrex 1800 watt pure sine wave inverter. So this is the unit that allows us to convert 12 volt power from the batteries to 120 volt power to use in the coach. And the run to the batteries being short is very critical on your inverter and our run to the battery is only four feet of wire which is optimal so you save on voltage drop and don't waste too much of the energy that you're using so that's the inverter 
Okay, so now we're inside the RV and we'll talk about some of the components of our electrical solar system inside. Um, for as far as 12 volt power, we have a lot of devices that charge on USB uh, outlets. So we have placed throughout the RV these USB charging stations. They're on all the time and they have a 12 volt outlet and two 2.1 amp USB charging stations. And we have those located throughout the RV. And uh, we have them beside our bed, we have them up in the front, we have them by the door, uh, kind of placed everywhere. So those run off 12 volts, directly off the battery. When we turn on our inverter, we do have all of our 110 outlets in the entire coach are running off of the inverter. So our microwave can be operated, any appliances we want to plug in. And then where we work on our computers at our workstations, I also have installed these outlets here, which have regular 110 volt outlets and then they also have two USB charging ports but those USB charging ports are only active when we're running the inverter so when we're producing 120 volt power. Uh, as far as monitoring how much power we're using, how our solar is doing and what's going on, I'll take you over here to our command center. So this is basically the command center of our RV um, and up here you'll see this is our trimetric battery monitor and this keeps track of various things going on with the system. So right now we're getting 12.9 amps of solar in as a charge at the moment. Our batteries are currently at 96%. Our coach battery, this also monitors our coach battery up in the front, the vehicle starting batteries, and they are at 12.7 volts. And the coach, the house batteries are 14.3 volts at the moment. And as I said, we're getting 12.8 amps of charge. Uh, another thing this allows us to do, it works kind of like a fuel gauge. So when I put it into amp hours, here you'll see a minus 20.1. So what that means is currently we are 20 amp hours below our full 600 amp hour charge. So as we're getting charged from solar, if we were to continue to get the 12 amps, per hour that we're getting right now, in about an hour and 15 minutes, we would be charged up to where we were at 100%. Uh, but since we're in the absorption phase, it'll probably take quite a bit longer. Uh, it may take until, you know, three or four hours until it actually reaches 100%. So as you can see, we actually just dropped down to 20. And we're, like I said, 12.7. This is our controller for our inverter, which as you can see, the inverter is on right now. Uh, there's basically no load on the inverter. We don't really have anything plugged in. Uh, we were just getting ready to charge some laptops and whatnot. So that will show us what kind of load we're pulling from the actual inverter itself. So as far as the inverter power and distributing that throughout our motorhome, uh, in the bedroom, we actually have installed a sub panel. So we have power coming from our inverter and feeds a sub panel, which is located back in our bedroom. So here is the standard, this is your regular RV distribution panel, and these breakers here would all be live if we were plugged in to shore power, which of course we're not right now. So from the inverter, the power is run to this sub panel down here at the floor, and then each of these breakers feeds the different loads throughout the RV. So obviously we can't run everything at one time, if we attempted to run all of our appliances at one time, we'd obviously overload our 1800 watt inverter. So we have to be selective on what we're using. When we're running appliances, we only do them one at a time. Um, if we're charging our laptops, we don't turn the microwave on. Uh, the only AC loads that we do not have tied into our inverter are the air conditioners and our water heater is capable of running on electric and that's not tied into the inverter. So that basically covers the inside and how we operate and monitor our system. Okay, so I think that about covers it. Just as a quick recap, our system consists of four AGM batteries, 12 volt for a total of 600 amp hours. We have 460 watt solar panels up on the roof for a total of 640 watts of solar. We have a 50 amp Victron MPPT charge controller and an 1800 watt Xantrex pure sine wave inverter. Uh, this system works perfectly for us. In fact, it's probably oversized for what we do. But, you know, for us, it's better to have enough power and not have to worry about it. If we decide we want to binge watch Netflix for eight hours one night, 
that won't be a problem. So uh, our system covers us well, takes care of us, and hopefully that answers any of the questions that you have about solar. If you have any other comments or questions, be sure to leave them down in the comments. Uh, I know another critical piece that people like to know is the cost of uh, what it takes to put together a system like this. Um, so what I've done is down in the description, I've given all the part numbers to what I bought. Um, you can look up those costs and see. The thing is, those costs vary from day to day, week to week, year to year. Um, so you can look up the different items that are part of our system and figure out what those costs are. Now, one way I did save a lot of money is I did this install completely myself. Um, everything was done by me. So if you're going to install a system like this, you also have to take into account the labor on top of what all the components and whatnot are. So that's just another thing to think about when you're uh, trying to decide how much and what type of solar system you want to put on your own rig. All right, so hopefully that video was informative for you. Uh, maybe you learned a thing or two, maybe you didn't, I don't know. But uh, we appreciate you watching. And until next time, this is Kurt from The Cool Odyssey. Have safe travels.